the Busman will come on a top 10 ranked Juco recruit in the class of 2021. He's a former Florida State commit from 2019 class. He's now joined them once again in 2021 to help put together a number two ranked class in the country and the highest in Florida State history. Naheem McLeod, how you doing, man? I'm doing well. You know, just got to get better every day. How you doing? Pretty good, man. Well, this has been a crazy journey, a crazy year for people, but you're going to play Juco. Then you got to start your college journey at Florida State. Just take us through how you're feeling right now. Uh, I'm excited. You know, we uh, start the season on the 20th, our first game. You know, it's a non-conference game, but, you know, it's uh, it's going to be fun to get out there with a couple guys that, you know, we're used to playing with. So it's going to be real fun to see what we've built, like, and what we can do. I want to go through this journey because it's been a long one for you, like I mentioned, and you've had ups and downs. And right now, as I said, you're getting ready for a season. It's all ups right now, but... Let's head back to high school. You're playing out in Plymouth, and you have an incredible season out there, incredible career out there. Just take us through your high school journey. Um, my high school journey was <laughs> – it was fun because I had a couple guys I played at AU with. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we had that team chemistry all the time. And, um, you know, the other guys off the bench accepted their role. You know, everyone knows that the ball – the objective of the game was to give the ball to me. And, you know, whatever I do with it, I had to make a play, whether I score or pass it. So – that's what our coach told our team to do. So we really did that and, you know, took it to the state championship every year. So we just couldn't come up with the W. And as I mentioned, you were a top 200 player. People knew who you were. You originally were going to Florida State. You enrolled there. And that's really the school you originally chose, though. So take us through, why was Florida State back there a few years ago? Why was that originally the school you chose? Uh, I love Coach Hamilton. His staff is amazing, you know, um, a lot of schools that recruited me didn't have seven footers before. You know, Coach Ham just had a seven footer there mm -hmm. the previous year, and uh, Chris Kamaji, and you know he's really doing an exceptional job of you know developing seven footers. And the other schools that I was going to commit to never had seven footers, so mm -hmm. you know Coach Ham made that well that I can get out there, guard one through five, you know, just play my game. So that's why I went to Florida State. That's a huge thing where a lot of guys always say they look for fit, maybe see coach's track record. And there aren't, like you said, there's not many coaches that land a seven footer, especially someone like you. We see Coach Hamilton done it. Purdue's had a few different guys, but you see that track record of Coach Hamilton getting guys and not just have them play at the college, but get them to play pro after college. How big was that for you? It was, you know, it was well. He told me I was supposed, like, I'm going to be there no more than two years. So I just got to come in and work compete every day and, you know, just get better. You know, Coach Ham has coached in the NBA, so he know what it takes. So, you know, that's one of my goals to get in them and, you know, learn as much as I can. Now, it's just jumping a little bit ahead, but on that roster we're looking at right now, the 2021-2022 team, there's going to be three seven-footers out there. I'm not sure any other team can put up that kind of height on a court at once. What will that be like? It's going to be weird. I, I never played with so many seven footers in my life. Like most of the time, I'm only seven footer on the team. So it's going to be, you know, I got to get used to it, you know, sharing the ball with another seven footer and, you know, sharing playing time. But other than that, everything is going to be well. You mentioned with Jalen, that Philadelphia connection, and that kind of is something that we see with a lot of people. What's it like just having that bond with each other? Uh, I played against Jalen my sophomore year in high school. Uh, I was like, like, he was like scoring, playing defense. And I was like, yo, who is this kid? And like later down the line, he committed to Florida State. And I was like, yo, I played against him. So we've just been talking ever since. And uh, yeah, we just really tight. That's like my brother. You've gone through two recruiting processes, both of them ending the same ending result. But what are the differences? You have your original one in 2019. You choose Florida State. What's the difference between that one and then your following one this past year? Uh, I think the difference is, you know, talent-wise, you know, 2019, it was me, Patrick Williams, and mm -hmm. and Boston Copervita, you know. Uh, you know, we all were ranked pretty high, and, you know, uh, it was was a blessing playing against those guys every day. But this 2021 class, they say it's supposed to be this, uh, the best class in Florida State history. So, mm -hmm. you know, we just got to come out there and prove it. Let's get back into your journey. So you go out there, you enroll in Florida State, then you end up becoming ineligible for grades and academic purposes. What was that process like? How'd you learn about that? And kind of take us through how you handled that end up going to JUCO. Um, I found out in the middle of practice, <laughs> a lot of you not, I was doing the drill mm -hmm. and like they pulled me over and it was like, yo, you got to stop practicing. And like, I was like in shape at the time, 
I was hooping, you know, killing everybody. So, like, they're like, yo, you got to stop practicing. I look over, I'm like, why? They're like, you just found out something. You're not eligible. You're not eligible to play this season and all this other stuff. So, like, I'm looking and I'm like, yo, you got to be playing with me. So, like, the coach is like, no, we're so serious. So, like, I was, you know, I was down for, like, a couple weeks, you know, really haven't touched the basketball, haven't been running. So, like, I was out of shape. You know, I thought I was just going to give up and just go back home. But, like, you know, I uh, chose a Juca that I wanted to go to. And, you know, it's no one Juca in the country in Florida. So I was just like, I'll go there for a year and, you know, just knock out some time. But I'll be back for sure. Now, when you have that situation, did you know that you were ineligible? Did you know that there might have been some potential issues with the grades, whether they're transferring over? Or that really just a complete shock to you? It was a complete shock. Like, I thought I was, you know, I thought I was ready to set, you know. Mm-hmm. Rotations was getting down. I was getting better every day, coming in, working, preparing myself for practice. And then, boom, I couldn't practice. And, you know, it was just a shock to me. You choose Chipotle and you didn't play last season. But what did you learn out of the past year? You've now developed. They've been the COVID stuff. All this has gone down the past year. But what have you learned for your game? What have you improved on? Just take us through the past year on the court for you. So, you know, this last few weeks, I've been working on a lot of my perimeter game, you know, catching, facing up, shooting threes, you know, dribbling the ball, you know, getting low, playing defense. So I've been working on everything, you know, getting stronger, faster, more mobile. So I'm going to surprise a lot of people because they think people my size are just supposed to be, you know, set a screen and roll. You know, my coach, you know, he told me that he had players like me before. That's rare. You know, I'm a special talent. And I just got to, you know, realize that and use it to my capability. So it's going to be a tricky season for a lot of teams this year. I had a question that I know some people have looked at before. We know the new rule, eligibility-wise, not going to count towards anything. Because you're not playing last year, will you be able to come in to Florida State as a freshman and have four years of eligibility, or will you still have three? I'll have four years at Florida State, so. That's awesome. So you look at that now, and I know JUCO players have always said the big problem with JUCO is – it's great, but you only have two years. It can be hard sometimes, not really the full experience of college. You have potentially four years to go to Florida State. How excited are you to be able to kind of create your legacy out there? Uh, it's well, uh, when I was there, you know, everyone knew who I was, loved me, take pictures, you know, mm-hmm. kind of like a fan favorite, you know, next to Trent Forrest. But, you know, it's going to be, you know, different because, you know, I don't have Trent Forrest, Devin Purcell, Patrick Williams, you know, a lot of those guys that was there last year. So it's going to be, you know, tricky. But other than that, everything is going to be fine. You have a Juco season before you get out there. I know you're looking forward to it, but just take us to this team and really what your guys' expectations are for the year. So we have a really, you know, exceptional team. Everyone on our team is about 6'4 and up. So, you know, our team is long. And, you know, we just got the – we just got a coach from the NBA G League. So he looked at us like pros. So, you know, we got it have the mindset, get our body preparated for practice. And, you know, it's going to be a, a heck of a season because, you know, we got an NBA coach and he's just wanting us to run, play, and just have fun. So that's all we're going to do is just win, go undefeated, and have fun. You talked about it before. Being seven foot three, automatically a lot of basketball people think, okay, this can be a guy that's going to be catching lobs, pick and roll, like you said. But as you mentioned, you can run, you can space it out to the three, you can go off the dribble, you really can do a couple different things in your game. How do you kind of plan to display that this upcoming season? So our coach has a lot of plays where I'm coming off pick and rolls and, you know, setting a lot of pick and rolls to confuse defenses, you know. So that's going to be tricky for a lot of teams if they see me coming off a pick and roll with the ball. So, you know, they don't know what to do with that. And, you know, he's going to let me just hoop, you know, just play, you know, fit into my game and just win. Now, you mentioned about the being able to space it out a little bit. How confident are you in the three-point game? How many shots per, from the 3 D plan on taking this year? Kind of discuss your outside game. Um, I know where my strength is. You know, my strength is, you know, in the mid range, low block area. So mm-hmm. I won't be showing too many threes, but, you know, I'll definitely be, you know, showing off that little bit of range, you know, just to, like, show that I can hit it. Without a doubt. And I like going to Juke a little bit more because – there's a certain mentality a lot of guys get from the Juca level. It's the dog mentality. How has this kind of been created in you? How has this dog mentality kind of formed in you throughout being out there? Uh, it's like, it's crazy because, you know, you're fighting for a spot mm-hmm. at, at a Juco. So you're fighting for a spot, playing time. 
you know, at a Division One school, you already know who's a walk on, who's going to play. So at a JUCO, you gotta you gotta be a dog twenty four seven, you know, to make it to make you stand out towards the coach. So it, it was rough for me at first, you know. I thought I was just gonna come here, you know, start do my thing, but you know, I had to work up. You know, I when I first got here, I was getting beat off the dribble, wasn't playing defense. So you know, I was like, yo, like these guys are like really trying to come at me. You know, I'm a D one transfer. So I was just like, I got to step up. And I showed the coach what I can do. So he, like, have a lot of trust in me. So we trust in each other. A lot of people feel that JUCO is not really that good. It's not a high level. A lot of people don't really have respect on JUCO. We're seeing more and more, though. JUCO's level is getting higher and higher, becoming more and more important to players' development. But when you first found out and said, okay, I can't play college basketball this year, JUCO is the route I'm going to go. What were your thoughts on that? Did you think JUCO was a good situation? Or what really was your expectations for your basketball career knowing that you're going to be going JUCO? I was a little bit excited and down at the same time. I was down because I had to leave my brothers at Florida State. Mm -hmm. but, but I was excited because, you know, everyone, like, JUCO was harder. Everyone get it out the mud. So I was like, you know, I'm going to JUCO, and we just got to play tough. So, you know, that was it. I was just, like, really happy, you know, to come out of a new atmosphere and just ground with the guys and, you know, just prepare for next next year. Before we get back into Florida State, there's one thing that we obviously have to touch up on. That is your height. You're seven foot four, I believe, right now. You said in an interview before you could go all the way up to seven foot seven. Just take us through this height vest. Not something that many people in the world can say. What's it like living at seven foot four? Um, it's weird because you know when I was in the sixth grade, I was already six four. Mm -hmm. So like, and I was like, I wasn't athletic at all. I was never athletic until I got to college. But I always had one arm so I can dunk. And, like, once I hit seventh grade, I was 6'6". Six, six, and, you know, I was going to amusement parks, and they told me I couldn't get on any rides <laughs> because my legs were too long. But I was like, nah, I got to do something with this height. So I thought I was going to stop at 6'6". Six, six. You know, my freshman year come around, I'm 6'9", seven feet at sophomore, 7'2", at the end of my junior year, 7'3", senior year, 7'4", now. So I was just like, I keep growing. And, like, every summer my knees start hurting, so I just yeah. grow every summer. And it's kind of weird because, like, I'm like, yo, I grow every summer. Like, I just don't stop. So I just got to, you know, I'm blessed. My my dad is 7'5". Mm -hmm. My mom is 5'5". I have a 6'4", twin sister. So, you know, my, my height and my family is pretty strong. Yeah, and that's something I was going to ask you because you're at that height. I know some people say just growing from, like, 6'2 to 6'6 at times, that can be painful to some guys. You're at 7'4". It's a whole other level. How have you grown into this? Has it been painful? Have you got grown into it now? Do you feel comfortable in it? Just take us through growing into this. Honestly, I sleep a lot. Like, if I'm not doing schoolwork or at basketball, I'm asleep. So, like, I grow in my sleep. It's kind of weird. And, like, I wake up and hit my head, and I'd be like, yo, like, I just grew some more. And it's just weird because, like, I just keep growing. And I'm like, I don't feel it. I don't feel it because I'm asleep. But, like, when I stand up, I'm like, yo, I just grew. Your dad, as you mentioned, is seven foot five as well. That had to be kind of crazy growing up. Obviously, not until you reach this height now and you're still a little bit under it. But what's it been like also just having this family of how I tall people there? It was, you know, it was weird because, you know, it's everyone always staring, asking, can I take mm -hmm. pictures? But like my dad played overseas basketball. So like he's like short sure, and I'll just jump in the picture with him, you know. So it's kind of like fun, but it's weird at the same time. I can imagine you guys go walking around the mall or anywhere together. You guys probably stand out a little bit there. What's the typical people's reaction when they see your family walk around? A lot of people stare. <laughs> but, like, a lot of people are, like, you know, they're they're nonchalant. They just look and just keep walking. But, you know, most people ask me, how tall are you? What size shoe do you wear? How old are you type thing? So <laughs> everything else is pretty much simple. Some guys that are super tall and always taller than other guys can sometimes feel uncomfortable did that ever have an instance for you, or did you always kind of feel confident in your height? I never, you know, felt comfortable in my height until I was a senior in high school because, like, everyone was just like, you're so tall. Like, you got to make it to the NBA. You know, the pressure was there. But I never felt it because, you know, my mind wasn't there yet. So, you know, everyone's telling me I got to make it. I got to make it, you know. But, like, my mind was never there. It was just, you know, to get through life, you know, just come successful at any way. But, like, now I'm like used to my height, getting comfortable with, with it on a court. So, you know, I'm just getting better every day. You mentioned your dad played basketball. I know your sister played as well. Growing up in a family of basketball, competing against them outside, 
what's it just been like learning from your dad and just being able to compete with them on the court and just learn from them? It's it's so weird because I, I grew up always wanting to play football. Mm -hmm. And then, like, my feet started growing and, like, you, you couldn't fly in cleats on my side. So mm -hmm. I was like, ah, football is <laughs> over. So I was just like, okay, I want to play basketball. It was random. Like, it was just random. And I was eight years old. I was, like, random. It was, like, the middle of the night. I told my dad I want to play basketball. He's like, cool. So we worked out in the morning. And I was like, I can get used to this, you know. So ever since there, I was just started playing basketball. If that was something that you could have potentially played, I know that would have been by far the tallest player ever to even play football at a professional level, but what position would you have wanted to run? I was a wide receiver. You know, I could catch. You know, I was tall, so I was like, yo, just throw it in the air. I'll go catch it. So mm -hmm. I was just like, I was always a wide receiver. Now, when you play against your dad, when did that game first start, and did you start beating your dad ever when you guys played one-on-one? -on -one? It's weird because, like, I always – you know, play my dad one-on-one, -on -one and, you know, I would rarely let him score. So, like, I would always win, but, like, because he think I would just, like, he, he don't think I can shoot. Mm -hmm. So, like, I was, like, like he don't have confidence in it. So, like, I'm, like, bro, I can shoot. So, like, I had to tell him, like, I, I, I beat him in the game 15-0 all jumpers, and it was just bad for him. And he's, like, oh, I'm old, I'm old, this and that. And I was, like, you shouldn't have stepped in the court. So, it was, it was, like, it was fun teaching him that I can, you know, play the game of basketball. Another characteristic about you is that we know you have a lot of nicknames. I believe you have five, at least according to your last interview. And right now you're rocking with Big Duke in your social media profiles. But take us to those nicknames and how each one of those started. <laughs> so my first ever nickname, my grandma gave it to me. Uh, my name is Naeem. So she called me Emi. And it was so weird. I was like, bro, that doesn't even sound like a name. So uh, two years later, my mom come home and said, I look like this man from her job named Earl. So my whole family started calling me Earl. And I was like, all right, cool. I guess I'll just take it. Mm -hmm. um, now, Weezy, uh, now, Weezy came from middle school. It was random. Some kid gave it to me. Uh, Boogie Nah, you know, Boogie Cousins, you know, that's my mm -hmm. guy. So I just was like, Boogie Nah. And then uh, my favorite name, Big Duke. You know, that was uh, given to me back in uh, Philadelphia. I was uh, playing basketball. Always. The crazy part is nobody knew this. I grew up a Duke fan. Mm. I grew up a Duke fan my whole life. And, you know, I was tall, so they called me Big Duke. And, you know, I just stuck with it. But, like, once, like, Duke recruited me, but it wasn't hard enough to where I was going to commit. Mm. And I was just like, nah, I want to go to, like, the ACC now so I can play against Duke and beat them. So, like, that's, like, a goal of mine in college. When you get to college and you know you're going to compete against Duke, you still going to rock that nickname? Yeah, I'm still going to rock the nickname. It's just, you know, it's just going to be fun. Big mm -hmm. Duke beating Duke. You know, it's just going to be fun. You mentioned Duke recruiting you a little bit, and that is something that I know is hard for a lot of guys. When you have that childhood dream school – you love growing up watching them. And when your dreams come true and they start talking to you, they're a potential option. Some guys get really narrowed in on that and say, I want to go there. That's the school I want to play at. And sometimes it might not be the best fit for them and it might take the career down the wrong way. How are you able to balance that through and say, I love Duke, but I want to go to the best fit for me. And that's going to be Florida State. Um, Crazy story. I actually met the coach that recruited me at a, like a daily it was like a, a corner store and he was like staring Whoa. at me and I was like yo like what are you looking at and then like he was like I'm a, a assistant coach at Florida State I'm recruiting you you know we know all about you so I was just like I didn't know what Florida State was I knew two schools that recruited me in Georgetown and Rhode Island the other schools like I didn't know about because like my uncle never told me I never cared about it I just wanted to hoop mm -hmm. so like when he told me he was recruiting me I was like Florida State Florida State I don't even know where that is. And, like, it was just weird because, like, I'd never heard of any other school. So I was just, like, I looked it up when I got home, and I was like, yo. I looked at their play style. I was like, I fit that play style. So I was just like, I got to go there. From that point forward, when did you guys start talking then? When did the relationship really start growing from the point you first met the guy at Florida State? It was that very next week. You know, they uh, came out again and watched me play another game. And I was just like, I wasn't doing the best. But, you know, I contributed in a lot of ways 
So I think I had seven points, like 18 rebounds. And, you know, uh, that really stands out to a coach. And, like, they didn't say anything to me. They was, like, staring at me as I was walking off the court. Like, I would look over to see if they would say something. They're just, they're just smiling. And I was like, I don't know. I just felt kind of, like, funny at that moment because I knew, like, that I was going to go to that school. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I went on a visit to Florida State. And, like, they treated me like they was, like, one of my brothers that I played with already. So, like, I was like, yeah, I definitely got to come in. Like, I told my uncle and I on that visit I had to go there. And so you're talking to them and you officially tell them that you're going to go there. And this is for the second recruiting process. And you tell Coach Hamilton again, this is where I'm going to be playing. I want to become Seminole. I'm going to go to Florida State. What was their reaction? Um, everyone knew that I was going back. It wasn't mm-hmm. like that I wasn't just going to leave. Like, I told Coach Hamilton, you know, I, I trust you. You're my guy. You know, I have faith in you. So, you know, I was like, I have to, I have to come back. I can't do you like that and just leave. So during that process, that kind of year gap or whatever, were there other schools that tried prying you away? Were there other schools that started reaching out to you? Yeah, you know, a lot of schools reached out to me when they found out that I left Florida State. Uh, and I was just like, I, I told them, like, simply, like, I'm sorry, but I, I'm going back, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, it was, like, fun while everyone recruited me, but, like, I have trust in Coach Hamilton to get the job done and send me to the NBA. So that's, that's what I plan on doing. So well, let's get in this upcoming year, man. You know you're going to play your season at JUCO, but you're going to start transitioning now. You're roughly around six months or so away from getting on campus and restarting this college journey at Florida State. What do you want to improve on? What's the things you really want to add to your game before you step foot on campus? So when I was at Florida State, the biggest thing they had me doing was getting comfortable playing on the perimeter. So that's what I've been doing, you know, with my time here at JUCO. I've just been, you know, playing on the perimeter, playing on the block, switching it up trying to see where I'm still most comfortable at. But the perimeter game is going to be, you know, like it's going to be a rare talent that, you know, you see a 7'4 guy out there on the perimeter, you know, can handle the ball, shoot it. So, and, you know, he wants, like Coach Hamilton wants us to switch one through five. So I have to, you know, get my feet faster and, you know, switch on guys and everything. So that's going to be a challenge too. So as Coach Hamilton told you then, does he kind of plan to maybe run you some of the three or even another position, like a two or three kind of role? So, when I was there, I was, like, playing three to five. So mm. it was weird because he'll throw in all three footers and, like, mm. get a stop. And I'd be like – I'll look around and I'd be like, all right, let's go. Like, you know, we're ready to rock and roll. So it was kind of weird at first playing with two of seven footers on my team. But it was kind of fun. There's not too many guys you can look up to that's at seven foot three, can space it out and shoot, that can do pretty much all you can. A couple come to mind, guys like Porzingis. And be to a good degree, but he's even three inches or so smaller than you. Kevin Durant, he's smaller than you, though. But who are guys that you kind of look up to? You model game after they like enjoying and watching you, and kind of take pieces from and put into your game. Uh, I look at you know Joel Embiid a lot. You know, everyone says that's like my twin brother. You know, we always goofy off the court, but on the court we take it real personal. You know, and you know I look at Nikola Jokic a lot as well. You know, I feel like. He's the perfect matchup for me. You know, we both can pass the ball. I feel like I play defense. Nicole Jokic doesn't play defense, but I play defense. And, you know, I was just like, I, I like, I really like this guy. You know, he does everything I do except play defense. So that's one thing that stood out to me. You mentioned the goofy part, and that is a thing that a lot of guys struggle with learning. And and B is one of my favorite guys as well. And we saw early on in his career, he did sometimes let the goofiness go to the core and didn't always work out for him. I think he's now learned to flip that switch, though. How have you learned that? How have you learned that once you're off the court, the game's done, before the game even, you can have fun with your guys, talk, mess around. But once you're on that court, that mindset shifts. How did you learn that? Uh, it, it was uh, my sophomore year. I played against a lot of my friends in, uh, in the AAU tournament. So mm-hmm. I was just always goofy on the court with them. And I realized they wasn't joking around with me. They was trying to, like, you know, kill me as in you know just mm-hmm. trying to do everything that they can to you know beat me so I was like yo like what's up and they like yo we're not friends on the court so that that would make me flip the switch and I was like okay you want to take it personal okay then that's what we're going to do so you know it took me up to my sophomore year to realize that I didn't have any friends on the court except my teammates absolutely now we know that Forte fans will be really excited for you they're gonna be excited for this recruiting class as you mentioned it's the best recruiting class they've ever had we see Matt, we see Jalen, we see John, which I'm super high on as well. You four, though, together, what can you guys accomplish in that year or so together? 
Uh, I feel like we're going to accomplish a lot. We're definitely, you know, we have, we have our eyes set on making the tournament, at least the Sweet 16. So we're, we're just going to come out there, grind every day, win. So, you know, Matthew Cleveland, you know, he's a, a, a rare talent. You know, he's very underrated in his class, like Jalen mm-hmm. Worry. So, you know, Jalen Worry is a combo guard, fast, mobile, can do everything. And John Butler, he's going to play the wing. That's what a lot of people don't know. Like, they see him at high school playing the block and playing a little bit of the the, uh, the perimeter. But, you know, at first, think he's going to be the main perimeter guy. So it's going to be fun having those guys on the court with me. We discussed it a little bit earlier on, but you as if you're on defense, can I guard you? Can I guard John? You got two seven-footers you're dealing with at the same time. How would you guard you two? I feel like I would go into a boxing one on us. Like, just you, you just can't let me or John touch the ball. You know, you're going to have to – every time we touch the ball, you're going to have to send a fast double team or triple team and rely on everybody else to beat us. That, that's what I feel like we would have to do. And that's the crazy thing because you two will be on the court together a lot. But if they want to box you two in, you're going to let a guy that's debatably, in my opinion, a top-10 player, Matt Cleveland, another five-star in Jalen Worley, he's going to be out there. And whoever else is on this team – so how how hard and how difficult will it be to guard this team? I feel like, you know, it's going to be really weird because, you know, we have a lot of size and talent. You know, I feel like we, we, we're going to have the most size in college basketball. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that that's going to be tricky for a lot of teams, you know, that only recruit six nine centers and, you know, like six six four men. So, you know, they're going to have trouble guarding us. I got to ask you about Coach Hamilton because, in my opinion, I think he's the most underrated coach in the country. We see Coach Cal and his guys that get guys to the NBA. They're phenomenal at that. He's been doing the same thing now in the past four or five years, year in, year out, top 10 picks, top lottery picks, second round picks, successful teams year in, year out. How special is he? How great of a coach and guy is he? Uh, coach Ham is a tremendous guy. You know, he's a very like, religious. You know, he talks about his faith and what his dreams are. He talks about, you know, his motivations and what what makes him go through life. And, you know, when I first met Coach Hamilton, you know, he's very up spirit. Like, you know, he's a church guy. You love he loves going to church, you know, he loves to sing. So when on my visit, Coach Ham was singing that uh he was singing the song that I'm coming to Florida State. And you know, I was like, Yeah, I love this guy. And I, I didn't even know him for more than five minutes. Like, I love this guy already. So I feel like, you know, with his trust, like on the court. Oh, he's a totally different guy. He's a mm-hmm. he's going to get up. He's going to get in your skin and you know try to get you to become the best player. But off the court, you know he's a very loving guy. There are some guys, and we're gonna we're gonna wrap up in a little bit discussing your faith and all. But I know that other guys that are strong believers say that they do look for a coach that that coach is spiritual. They can just kind of have that bond on the spiritual level is maybe not the biggest thing for a guy, but it is a very appealing thing to you guys. How have you guys connected on this faith base and the spiritual level? Oh, uh, we connect very well. I believe uh, Coach Ham, I was going to church every Sunday with Coach Ham. So, mm-hmm. you know, it was just, you know, to see him happy, smiling every day would just make me happy. You know, I would uh, always come and practice, you know, always the glass half empty instead of half full, you know, not knowing how blessed I was to be at a Division One school. So Coach Ham, uh, you know, really took me out to church and everything. You know, it really brought my spirit up. So. I was just like, yo, I like actually love this guy. Like, I feel like he's my dad for real. And it was just like, we just clicked ever since. We are talking more about that. I haven't heard that before by any coach before that they take the players to church. Is that something that you guys were just talking about faith and he invited you one time? Does he ask the team? Kind of take us through that experience and how you guys started that. So Trent Forrest also went to that church mm-hmm. and, you know, it's like his family church. So, you know, uh, they invited me, Trent Forrest invited me one day and, you know, he was like, yo, you want to come to church Sunday morning at nine after we go get something to eat? So I was like, yeah, I don't have anything else to do. We don't have practice until one one o'clock. Mm-hmm. So when I went to church, I seen Coach Ham there. That's what really surprised me. And Coach Ham, you know, he looked at me like, what's going on, buddy? And, you know, I sat next to him and we was all happy together. And I was just like, yo, this guy is like, I love this guy. You know, these, these are like my family. That's awesome. And, so we have to mention that he put guys in the NBA year in, year out, top 10 guys, second round picks, the list goes on. But you were with him a little bit. You didn't get a whole season with him. You'll get that this upcoming year or so. But 
What do you think the secret is to him? How is he able to keep getting these guys that some are ranked high, some are unranked? How does he keep getting these guys to the NBA? Um, I feel like it's a lot of his uh, track record. You know, he's winning in the NBA and in the college game. And, like, a lot of people don't know that he's 72 years old. So he's been doing this for a long time. And, you know, he really has everything that, you know, you need to get to the next level. So, you know, he tells you that, oh, if you're a wing, you need to sprint to the corner every time. So, you know, like college coaches look at that. I mean, NBA experts look at that. And, you know, they evaluate if you run to the corner every time. You know, if you're a big, you know, run to the middle of the floor. So, you know, it was kind of, like, scary that he knew all the answer to the, like, test that he would just give them to him on the basketball course. I was just like, yo, this guy is, like, a genius. And we saw the display this past year. I'm not sure how many times in history it's happened where – they take a guy that is as talented as Patrick Williams is and take him off the bench. A lot of people might say, how is that possible? But he thrives in that top five pick in the NBA draft. You just see that he's able to picture guys and put them in the right position that helps them for the college team, pros as well. How crazy was that seeing? And how, how excited do you see what he how he uses you? Um, It was kind of, like, scary to see, like, Patrick come off the bench because, <laughs> you know, Patrick's a really athletic guy, and he's young. He just mm-hmm. turned 19. So, you know, he can shoot the ball, play defense. So we feel like Patrick was going to be that spark off the bench that just lift everybody up and take them to the next level. So, you know, Patrick came in there, did what he did. And, you know, he was the fourth pick in the NBA draft. And, you know, so really surprised a lot of people. Out of your class right now, how many guys do you see going pro? We mentioned Jalen and Matt. I'm sure they're kind of likely they're targeting John as well. But how many guys, when you get out there on that team, do you see playing in the NBA someday? I feel like. Definitely all of us, but, you know, time is not on everybody's side. So it's going to take some of us more years to, you know, get their numbers because, you know, Matthew Cleveland, very versatile, plays the one through four, can guard one through five, basically. And, you know, Jalen Ware is a great combo guy. And, you know, John Butler, you know, he just does everything. He's like a unicorn. So, you know, he just is he's a rare talent as well. Seven foot can do everything like me. So, you know, we we just going to, you know, have to come in there, share the ball, work and, you know, go to the NBA someday. And that's my last basketball-related question for you. We know your ultimate goal is NBA, playing professional after college. When you see your game and you see the level of NBA players and what you need to be able to make that level, what do you need to improve on your game? What's kind of your track record? What do you kind of see yourself need to add before you think you're ready to go for the NBA? So, like, as of right now, I'm, like, definitely getting faster and stronger, mm-hmm. you know, trying to make my, like, court awareness better. Because, you know, I, I look, I love to pass the ball. That's like a lot of people don't know about me. Like, I love to pass. Like, if I was getting, like, if I had a wide open dunk and I knew somebody was in the corner that can make it three, I would pass the ball, you know, because I have, like, faith in my teammates. And, you know, college coaches, like, really love that about me because I did the same thing in high school. I would turn down shots that I knew I could make, and I would pass the ball. And, like, you know, everyone calls me unselfish. So that's why I feel like Nikola Jokic, like, was my best player. So a player that, you know, represents me. And I feel like, we both, as in me and Nikola Jokic, you know, we're very unselfish. So that's why I was like, yo, like this guy is like literally me, except he don't play defense once again. <laughs> and you do bring defense. So that's the last thing I do want to touch up on. Take us to your defensive side. I know some people might think being seven foot three is easy to shot block. Seven foot four is easy to block shots. That might not always be the case because you can do all kinds of things on the defensive end. So break down your defensive mentality and what you bring on the defensive end. So... I, I actually started playing defense because of Draymond Green. I seen how, like, passionate he was on defense. You know, he really lets people score on him. And I was like, yo, if I play like that on defense, I would be scary. Mm-hmm. So, like, I was just, like, watching Draymond defensive highlights. And, you know, I was like, yo, like, this guy's IQ is amazing. So, I would, like, do things that, like, Draymond would do on the defensive end. And that's, like, that's like scary that 7-4 being, like, a defensive presence, like, slide his feet guard one through five, and it's just kind of scary that, you know, a 7-4 kid can do that. Couldn't agree more. Now, I was, like, wrapping up discussing your legacy, and I know all guys want to create that that legacy for yourself. By the time you walk away from the game, what do you want to be remembered for? What do you want your legacy to be for what you achieve both on and off the court? Um, On the court, you know, I just want to be a guy that, you know, just said that he played with everything he had, you know, never took a playoff, and, you know, that just went out there and wanted to win. Off the court, I want to be remembered as, like, a guy who really gave back to the community. That's, like, one of my big goals, to give back to the community. 
that really took care of me because, you know, growing up where I grew up in Philadelphia, you know, it's rare to make it out. And like, I didn't even think I was going to go to college, to be honest, mm-hmm. even graduate high school. So now that I did both of, both of those, you know, I crossed them off my list. And it's like really a blessing in my life because, you know, like growing up in the hood is like kind of rough. So I was just like, I got to I got to make something of my life. I can't just be out here, you know, seven, four on a block, not doing anything with my life. So that was kind of something I dedicated my life to giving back to the community when I make it. That's very important. I know not all people understand that situation. And a lot of guys don't always think it's a way out. And so they always go down different things and past, but you have that story where you say, I've graduated high school. I'm not going to go to college. And I look forward and can have a high chance of playing in the NBA or playing professional someday. What's your story and how you could plan on kind of impact and be that, be that kind of inspirational story to guys and kids growing up out there? So I, I actually, you know, have a book about me. Mm-hmm. It's called uh, Me and Fat Burger. You know, my uh, niece calls me Fat Burger. And I don't know where she came up with that name, but I like took that name and like nobody knows that I have that nickname. And like, uh, it was kind of weird because I really liked that name for some reason. And we wrote a book about it, you know, and it's like, it's like a children's book. So, you know, I like, I love kids. I love kids. You know, I do anything about kids. And, you know, I was just like, once I, once I did that, I was just like, yo, like, it's crazy that like, that uh, a, a name can write you a book. Like, and it's not even like a, it's not even like a, a bad book. Cause you know, it's a children's book, you know, it's about like me and my niece. You know, she comes up to like my kneecap. She's very tiny. And like, you know, it's 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 all love and affection, you know. That's awesome. And I mentioned I do want to wrap up discussing faith. And I know you've talked about God a few different times, but ultimately, how would you say you've seen God work in your life and work in your basketball career to help get you to where you're at today? So, like I said, like growing up, you know, I always looked at everything down. You know, I never looked up. You know, I was always like the kid that didn't really care about everything. I was nonchalant. And I was like, I didn't have a work ethic for anything. I didn't go to school, you know, always was fighting, you know. But like, I had I to like something snapped and like, yo, you gotta like change your ways in your life. So, you know, I started going to school, paying attention, passing classes, you know. Like a lot of kids, like, yo, you switched up. Like what happened to this, you know, aggressive name that, you know, used to fight everybody. And, you know, I was like, nah, I don't have time for that. Like I'm getting older. And I want to do something with my life. Like, I just don't want to be here 24 seven, just, you know, playing with the same people all the time. So, mm-hmm. you know, I just woke up one day and I was like, I got to take something serious. So basketball in school was like my things that I took serious. And so when would you say you kind of found God? When did you see how God kind of helped get you to the point you're at today? When I was 10 years old, I uh, broke my leg. Mm-hmm. And like, I wanted to give up on life. I was like, super like down. I couldn't walk. And I was just like, yo, like, I don't even like, I don't even want to move. Like, I just want to be here like 24 seven. Like, I just want to sit in the same spot. But I uh, started going to rehab and like, it was kind of crazy. Cause like people, to see people motivate you to, you know, do better, you know, like, come on, you can do it one more rep, you know, come on, you got another rep in you. So I was just like, yo, like, I got to Like, I got to make it. And I know you're also pretty vocal about your faith. You're constantly posting different things on your story. You have different scriptures in your bios. Why have you decided to be so bold and so talkative and you discuss your faith so much? Um, Scotty Lewis is a very good friend of mine. So, you know, Scotty Lewis, you know, he told me he wanted to be the president one day. And I looked at him and I smiled and I was like, yo, you can do it. So, like, once I seen Scotty start speaking up, you know, he's a philanthropist and everything. So, like, once I seen Scotty start speaking up, I was like, okay, he's using his voice to, you know, speak out against social justice and, and you know, the things going out in the world. So, you know, I want to be a kid like that, too. So, you know, I, w- I want to take in his footsteps and, you know, lead like him. So that's what I started doing. Absolutely, man. Well, final thing for you, give Florida State fans your three biggest goals you have set for a Florida State career. Uh, as far as I'm there, I just want to win national championships, um, give back to Tallahassee and, you know, go nose. That's it, baby. <laughs> Without a doubt, man. Well, I definitely appreciate you taking time to come on today and I can't wait to see what God's got next for you, man. All right. Appreciate it. Of course. You're always welcome on, man. God bless. All right. God bless you, man.